Good morning again, everyone. Welcome and thank you for being here for our very special morning here at the Windsor Senior Center. We have our writing group here this morning. The writing group is called Scribe, and they're here. Yes, a big round of applause, please. They are here to share with us some of their very talented writings. They are led by Miss Elizabeth Thomas. Elizabeth volunteers her time to be here to work with the group, so we thank you so much for your time. We appreciate all that you do, and I hope you enjoy the morning and the readings this morning. Elizabeth, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thank you all so much for doing this. And we'd like to uh, thank you, Rebecca, and the Windsor Senior Center for giving us uh, time and space here. Of course. We thank you very much. We've been meeting as a group for a little over a year, and uh, we put together a booklet of some of our writings. There are a few copies available if anybody is interested. But uh, one thing I would like to do right now while Rebecca is still here is um, Give the Senior so Center much. and you a copy. We've thank all you. signed it. Oh, thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank yeah. you. All. Yeah. Again, we're called Scribe. The, these are uh, the, the core group. We have a few other people who kind of come and go, but this is the, the core group here. And we're each going to share a couple of things that we've written over the past year with you. So to start us off this morning, I would like to welcome up to the microphone, Andrea Schnur. Yay. Yay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'm writing memoir pieces thanks to Elizabeth. Uh, some are narrative poetry, some are prose, some are a combination of the two, and they're for my children and my grandchildren. My intent is to give them a glimpse of how it was growing up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and to know more about their family heritage. Today I've selected some Christmas memories to read, and as befits the season, and maybe some of you will be reminded of holidays in your past. This is a Christmas Eve story. On a chilly Christmas Eve, we sat dazed with our 10-day-old, red-faced firstborn. Startled by the door chime, we found Santa on the stoop, all red plush and furry. He was listing a bit to the right and loudly ho-ho-hoing. Unsteadily making his way inside, he had a hard time negotiating the furniture. Chuckling and exclaiming over the baby, Santa reached into his wrinkled sack and produced a weird orange teddy bear, which he placed in the cradle. At that point, our surprise visitor slurred, Merry Christmas, and walked out. Astonished by the whole one minute visit, we watched him weave out of sight. Being the last family in the neighborhood to start a family, we didn't know that our otherwise staid neighbor, Bill, paid an annual Christmas Eve visit to each home bearing a toy for every child. Shunning cookies and milk, he enjoyed a cup of Christmas cheer at each house. Our house was the last on the block. <laughs> and you know, out of all the sweet little black, brown and white teddies, our Jonas loved that odd, bright orange one the best. <laughs> I have a, a longer piece, so bear with me. This is called Tis the Season. This is sort of an overview of, of my, uh, the normal Christmases that we celebrated in my home. In December, Dad and I went to Charlie's stand to select our Christmas spruce from among the spindly specimens on the lot. After lugging it home and wrestling it into the wobbly red tree stand, 
Dad fought the tangle of lights alone, poor man. Once spread around the tree, there was the frustrating job of figuring out which bulb was the culprit in causing the whole darn string to go dark. <laughs> that task completed, Dad disappeared, and Nanny, Mom, and I would open old boxes of tired glass ornaments and hang them on the sparse limbs. Foil icicle. I think you just have to hold it down a little, I'm sorry. Foil. A little bit, Andre. That's the thing there, so maybe just keep your finger. Oh, did I turn it off? It'll be off. Is the other one better? It's gotta go up. Here, let's try this one. Hello? Yeah. Is that, Test. Is that working? I'll try this. All right, just swap. All right, that's better. Uh, that task completed, Dad disappeared, and Nanny, Mom, and I would open old, tired, old boxes of tired glass ornaments and, and hang them on the sparse limbs. Foil icicles, carefully saved from year to year, went on last, placed on the branch tips one by one. When the boxes were empty, we stood back to admire our work. Then Dad would bring out silver filigree punch cups of hooch-laced eggnog, my tiny taste, leaving a milky, nutmeggy mustache. The room smelling of spruce and glowing in the soft light of the large multicolored bulbs was best experienced from under the tree, where I would curl, peering up through the branches, while the grown-ups sat listening to Bing Crosby carols, sipping their eggnogs, and enjoying the ambiance and each other. Christmas Eve was always at Uncle Billy's with hordes of assorted relatives on Mom's side. My dad and Uncle Billy, both the life of the party, prepared funny poems and joke gifts, like a rubber finger for my uncle as he had cut the tip off his finger in his deli's meat slicer, or a dollhouse toilet for Great Aunt Sue, whose vintage farmhouse had only just acquired indoor plumbing. As the evening progressed, the adult laughter grew louder with each highball, and my grandmother was giggling from eating whiskey-soaked Manhattan cherries. We kids disappeared upstairs to Aunt Louise's sun porch, where stacks of comic books lived. We surfaced when the midnight supper was laid out. Tons of deli meat and salads, Uncle Amel's baked beans, and Aunt Dot's poppy seed kuchen. One year, as I stood in the food line, my little cousin Scotty, ran up to hug me and peed on my velvet dress. I was outraged, of course. At home, waking later on Christmas morning, we exclaimed over the brightly wrapped hall that Santa had placed around the tree. We opened our gifts one by one, admiring each present and saving the paper and bows. One year, I received a stiff and satiny bride doll. Another year, perhaps a wooden dollhouse, and always a new box of brilliant waxy crayons and a Nancy Drew book. <laughs> On Christmas night, we stopped to enjoy a cup of holiday cheer and exchange gifts with my dad's sister and family, en route to a quiet visit to my great aunt Howdy and Uncle o Ole's home. Lit only by firelight and window candles, Christmas glowed softly. As I listened to the adults talking, I enjoyed a Coke in a tall, thin glass with ice that tinkled, a great treat for me. The next day, the tree would be dragged out to the curb, the icicles painstakingly removed, the ornament boxes stowed in the attic next to where my dolls rested in the spool cradle. I knew that my dad would provide some creamy stationery and see to it that I wrote all my thank you notes, reflecting my appreciation for another happy Christmas. And I hope that some of you have holiday memories that are Nice is mine. I'm happy to. Thank you. Test. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. I love the whole idea of the Nancy Drew book. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so next up, let's welcome to the microphone, Terry Wojanowski. Hello. Sorry for the small voice. Um, the poem that I'm going to read is 
about one of one that came about from a vacation of mine at Cooperstown, New York, which is located near the Catskill Mountains. And the name of it is The Song of the Loons. We had stopped in Cooperstown, New York to visit the Baseball Hall of Fame and stayed at a rustic cabin right on Lake, Lake uh, Seago. It was nearing dusk. The sun was setting. Pink and purple striations stretched across the horizon. The moon illuminated the lake and shimmered in the evening's light. The pine trees emitted a fragrance that was pleasing to the senses. In the distance, a pair of common loons sang their sweet song, reminding me of an oboe striking a single high note that dangled in the breeze, like a sonata that Mozart composed. It sent shivers up my spine, a smile to my face, tears to my eyes, and a symphony to my ears. The next poem is reminiscent of my childhood memories when I was seven years old. It's entitled Curly Top. The year was 1963. I was seven years old. I would sit and watch Shirley Temple movies on Saturday afternoons on my black and white TV, aluminum foil on the antenna to get decent reception. Curly Top was one of my favorites. I can still see myself following along with Shirley, singing the animal crackers in my soup. It went something like this. Animal crackers in my soup. Monkeys and rabbits loop by loop. Gosh, oh gee, but I have fun. Swallowing animal crackers one by one. So you can only imagine my delight when I received the best gift ever from my dad, a Shirley Temple doll. Her golden pink curls captivated me as I would run my fingers through her locks. I was mesmerized by her bright brown eyes that sparked, sparkled radiantly. I would dress her in vintage outfits and spend hours playing with her. 55 years later, and I still have my Shirley doll. She's quite worn, but she brings me back to those fond memories when I was a child. Not a care in the world, loved by my folks. I felt special being given such a precious gift. Shirley never ceased to amaze me on film. She was effervescent, lively, spirited. I was fascinated by her, the way she sang, the way she danced. It was because of her that I took up tap dancing. Jane Hart in Hartford had her own dance studio, and she introduced tap dancing to me and other young girls at Pope Park, which was free of charge. I was no expert, but I felt one with the star. <laughs> Shirley has been my role model through my life. She grew up to be a great mom, a diplomat for the United States, ambassador to both Ghana and Czechoslovakia, loved by all in those countries, a fine example and all around good person for women around the world. I have always admired her enthusiasm and spoke. And even though she has passed, I will never forget the part she played in my life. Okay, all right, that was Terry Wojnowski. Another round of applause. All right, coming up next, let's welcome Iva Allison. You gotta, you gotta turn the hat on. That's a prop. There we go. <laughs> okay, now, no, those I, of you who know me know that I had seven brothers. I vote. Oh, oh, know that I had seven <laughs> brothers. Um, it was kind of hard to fit in with those seven <laughs> brothers because um, if you had a dad that loved sports, then you know 
didn't matter if you were a girl or a boy, if you had seven brothers, you loved sports. And that's how my first one came about, Autumn Thoughts. I love the line on my back looking at the autumn sky. Autumn is the best time of the year, my birthday. Earth, wind, and fire singing the September song. Tailgating at a Bears game. Um, the smell of great beer. And oh yes, the smell of Chicago hot dogs. Plump with just a little burnt on the bun. <laughs> Riding home after the game, looking at the vast countryside. Flat land for miles and miles. Autumn trees, orange, yellow, and reddish brown. Wind blowing through the trees, releasing beautiful swirls of leaves. Um, the second one is uh, Christmas memory. Yeah. Can you hear me now? There we go. There okay. we go. I don't really like these things. That's why I don't put them up. Okay. We don't have a chimney. How will Santa come? I guess the same way he always came. Through the front door. All I wanted was some Lincoln logs so I could build the biggest fort in the world. I could put all of my possessions inside and they would be safe. The brothers again. I had seven brothers in our house. It was survival of the fittest. Either that or who could come up with the best solution at that time. Christmas was always a time of joy at the, at the Chisholm household. My aunts, uncles, cousins, and family friends would come over for the holidays. They would bring tons of food and my mom would bake for days. We would have a huge family dinner and laugh, sing, and dance. My dad and mom were the best swing dancers in the whole entire neighborhood. <laughs> of course, my favorite part was the gifts. We had gingerbread men acquired from the Gold Star Bakery at the corner of Western and Dundee Streets. Miss Linda, one of my favorite people, always gave us kids extra broken pieces. <laughs> Even the beagle hound that we own named Lady got gifts. Everyone was <laughs> happy and full of cheer, especially Uncle Roy. He always made a stop at the local bar before coming to our house. But he gave the best gifts, money. <laughs> All right, that was Isla Allison, another round of applause. Okay, and uh, next coming up to the microphone is uh, Joel Farola. He will be coming up another time later, but he has one poem to share right now. Come on up, Joel. This uh, poem is called Dragons Want Pearls. I am a dragon. I search for pearls. Some say I am real. Some say I am an illusion. I say I am magic. Some do not believe me because I am outside the circle of logic. Logic is dull and gray, but my life is full of bright colors and gold because I have mystery, wisdom, and special things. To those who say there are no dragons, I say I am too good to throw away just because I exist only in the imagination. All right, so let's hear it again for Joel. And keep it coming. Keep on applauding for Virginia Bales coming up to the microphone. 
she only happens to be my aunt. <laughs> and Carl. Yeah, actually, Carl, Carl the, the transportation, the van guy, big tall, bald guy, that's my brother and her nephew. <laughs> stories, I like funny readings, and so most of what I write. Can you hear me? Yeah. You gotta keep it right there your mouth. Right on your mouth. Keep it right in your mouth. Yeah, right in there. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> and most of what I write is funny, I think. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me just start. My first one is called How Not to talk to your boss. <laughs> Mr. L was always trying to show us just how smart he was. On this particular morning, he gathered the troops and asked, do you know how the moon gets lit? I replied, you probably have one drink too many. For one awful moment, there was silence you could cut with a knife. Then the loud laughter began. I didn't dare look directly at Mr. L, but from the corner of my eye, I saw that his face looked terribly sunburned. <laughs> a few people did ask me later how I had the nerve to say what I said. I don't know, it just came out. What I do know is I didn't last long in that department. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. It really happened to me. You might find. You gotta you use the mic, Conchie. Mic. The mic. <coughs> you might find that hard to believe, but it did happen to me. Sometimes the consequences were disastrous. <laughs> I want you to say something further about Mr. L. Okay. I added an addendum. I want you to put this one in because I always laugh every time I read it. Um, I'm not really an organized person. Uh, one last funny comment about Mr. L. He was always immaculately dressed. Rumor circulated that he probably wore pressed pajamas when he took out the morning garbage. <laughs> you're going to say, is that lady crazy? But here's the uh, title. Now, home uh, was a week of, let me start with the title, anchovy donuts. <laughs> Has any of you ever heard of anchovy donuts? No. That's what I thought. Home was a week before Christmas. The smell of anchovy donuts fried in deep olive oil. Home was the odor that clung to our coats and hair from those delicious donuts. I often wondered what strangers thought. That funny fishy smell permeating everything we were. Home was our kitchen, a beehive of activity. All kinds of goodies being made cookies, Italian pastry, you must have pie. You must have heard 
to that, angel wings and those stinky donuts. No counters in those days, the table was the author of preparation. That only added to the mess, but all was forgiven when we sat down to eat. Here's my final reading. I'm sure you're saying, ah, oh, finally. Uh, my memories of my first office job in the 1950s are very strong. I worked part-time for Connecticut General, now known as Cigna. Remarkably, that building is still there, across from Bushnell Park. My friend Wanda and I would trudge down from Hartford High School with less than an optimistic view of our future. I take that back. There was always payday on Monday. On Tuesday, we would always take that money, skip work, and go down to Brown Thompson's for fries and a Coke. I was always surprised at how the women in the office dressed to outdo each other. I often wondered if they bought something new right after a payday. You can imagine the impression two 17-year-old kids made when we entered the office. The work was deadly. Five, five, five. In addition, I was sure my well-dressed supervisor didn't like me. She always seemed to have a frosty look on her face when she talked to me. That was supposed to be a big jump from my part-time job at Newberry's at five and ten cent store. My hopes were dashed. In my senior year of high school, my frosty supervisor offered me a full-time job. I was so shocked, so surprised. I uttered the words, why would I want to work here full-time? I don't even like working here part-time. I finally had her attention. <laughs> All right, so let's hear it again for Virginia Bales. And those, they were very stinky. Those donuts were disgusting, let me just say. My father, though, thought they were the best thing going and looked forward to them every Christmas. Uh, next, coming up to the microphone is going to be uh, Josie Rodriguez. And uh, Frank is going to come up. Oh, you're going to call him? Okay. All right. So let's hear it for Josie. That's her life. <laughs> Hello? Okay. Um, in these days and age, families are living so far away. Grandchildren's contact with their grandparents are mainly through social media, Facebook, Instagram or Skype. You can identify with that, right? <laughs> Visits and conversations are infrequent, rare, and becoming non-existent. We are going to present to you a conversation between a grandchild and his grandparents, the grandpa, Frank, come on over. Grandpa, uh, Frank will be the grandpa. The child lives close by and therefore frequently drops by grandma's house. Grandma is Elizabeth. <laughs> and I'll be the grandchild. I'll be Johnny. <laughs> and uh, this piece is, I entitled it, Yes, Johnny, we still can. Grandma, stand up, please. We may be old, frail, and slow, but our spirits are high and will never go low. 
We may not run or walk as fast as you do, but our hearts are racing a mile or two. <laughs> Johnny to Grandpa. Grandpa, just sit on your rocking chair. Enjoy the crisp autumn air. Or lounge in your lazy boy chair. Watch baseball, football, or even who wants to be a millionaire. No, no, my dear, I can still do a lot of things that come my way. Johnny to Grandma. Grandma, just knit and crochet. Cook, clean, and pray. Or listen to your favorite tune, or better yet, watch Wheel of Fortune. No, no, my dear. I can still do the things that come my way. We cannot drive at night. That we wholeheartedly accept. So off to the senior center we trek. We laugh, talk, and pray. We even dance to everyone says May. <laughs> but we don't care because, yes, we still can. We exercise because we have calories to burn. Modern issues in life we learn from speakers who come, shine, or rain. Our days are full of interesting trips, even restaurants serving beef strips. We dine and drink wine, sip by sip. We even go home with boxes of doggy treats. Grandpa and Grandma sit down, and this is their last word. This is their spirit. Our our embers are dimming, our days are waning, with church bells loudly ringing. Johnny, my dear, we leave you with this saying, the sun setting is no less beautiful than the sun rising. And Johnny, not knowing the sensitivity to what grandma and grandpa are saying just says grandma i'll see you tomorrow we will watch your garden grow i'll even come with my bodies to eat your delicious cookies ago I had an experience that I'll never replicate. Fishing with my uncle and cousin I was dropped off upstream with a plan of working downstream until we met up. After rigging my rod and reel, pulling up my waders, I made my way knee deep into the limestone water. There was a fog sitting on the stream as the day of fishing began. I made a couple of casts and then something seized my attention. I pulled my line from the water and stood in the awe of the surroundings. I noticed the mist lifting off the water as the sun was appearing over the mountaintop. The stream made a quiet ripple while birds around me sang their songs, welcoming the picturesque morning. It was then I realized how pleasant the water felt swirling around my legs. Believe me. If you ever have a chance to wade through limestone stream, you'll feel like you're walking through silk. As I savored my surroundings, I heard a clatter in the distance. 
there was a clop, 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 increasing in volume and coming closer on a lane parallel to the stream. Then emerging over the knoll, an Amish horse-drawn wagon with a father taking a son and daughter to school. I couldn't move. It was the Almighty telling me, enjoy the moment. No mom money will ever buy anything close to this. All right, we just have a couple more to go here. I would like to um, uh, do, Frank, can I have that? Oh, sure. Thank you. Clark Dollars. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read one that I wrote, and then we're going to end with uh, Joel back up to the microphone. And uh, before I, I read this, I would just like to thank you all for being a wonderful audience. This is called Home Was. Mine was a home with tiny bedrooms. Squeezed full of children and dust. Dancing dolls in one corner, drums in another. Mine was a home where brothers sang loud and clear, had guitar lessons, and played the drums. A home where I had to clean their rooms. Mine was a home where my mother baked apple pie, ironed creases into my father's work shirts, danced alone to the radio, in her cluttered kitchen, where my father's voice clanged like church bells in my ears, making it difficult to hear anything else, where the only time I felt sure about anything was hidden beneath my blanket with a flashlight, reading myself to sleep. Thank you. And the last one up, she's gonna, gonna, what do they call that at the end of a show? He's gonna walk us out, I guess. Joel Ferrola coming back up one more time to the mic. Thank you all so much. Houses. Some houses are red, some houses are blue. Some houses are green, some houses are yellow. Some houses are white, some houses are big, some houses are small. Some houses are new, some houses are old, some houses are brick, some are wood, some are stone. Have you ever opened a door and let someone in? Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and a peaceful and amazing new year. And thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much for sharing your talented work with us. It was a beautiful morning. We appreciate each and every one of you. We're very proud of your group meeting here every other Monday. We hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the day.